cue balls. Did scientists just find out why we exist with this insane discovery? Or does the discovery confuse our current understanding of why we may exist? In order to uncover one of the universe's most confounding mysteries, scientists must continue to look at the age-old question, why do we exist? You're watching Matter, and today we're diving into a new theory that may help explain why we and everything else in the universe exist at all. What are matter and antimatter? We all know that everything that we see in our universe, the stars, the planets, and even our own bodies are made up of matter. Matter is really just stuff, and the matter that makes up everything we interact with is called baryonic matter. It gets the name because it's made up of baryons, which are one type of fundamental particle comprised of three quarks. But did you also know that there is an opposite counterpart to matter that scientists have been studying for the past century? This substance is known as antimatter. Each particle of matter in the standard model has an antimatter counterpart with opposite attributes. Now, an antimatter particle will be nearly identical to its ordinary matter counterpart in many ways, but it will differ in characteristics like its electric charge. This opposite charge means that matter and antimatter feel an attraction between each other, and when they meet, they immediately obliterate each other, releasing an enormous amount of pure energy. What happened in the early universe? In the very beginning, the universe was born in a moment of massive expansion we call the Big Bang. And during this, both matter and antimatter were spawned into our universe. Much like a superhero and their arch nemesis, matter and antimatter want nothing more than to annihilate each other as soon as they meet. And because matter and antimatter annihilate each other when they interact with one another, if they are produced in equal quantities, like some models of the Big Bang predicted, there should have been no matter left to form the universe. But for some reason, that remains unknown. Matter ended up winning out, the ratio became slightly skewed, and more matter was created than antimatter. The Theory of Cue Balls This theory claims that the particular way that the quantum fields interacted favored the production of matter more than antimatter. The fields then responded in a peculiar way that formed lumps, called cue balls, within the fields that allowed the extra matter to hide away for a time. Now, you may be wondering what exactly quantum fields are and how they played a role in this process, so let's take a closer look. What are quantum fields? Quantum mechanics and more specifically quantum field theory, teaches that throughout the universe there are fields spread through all of space that are responsible for creating our reality. Essentially, quantum fields are a theoretical framework that exists throughout space in which small variations or fluctuations can occur. You can think of these fields like a trampoline with a heavy ball sitting in the middle. The weight of the ball causes the field of the trampoline to bend, and the shape of this warping can represent the amount of energy the field is putting into our universe. In quantum fields, fluctuations in the field give rise to the fundamental particles that make up the physical reality of our universe. Some quantum fields that you may be familiar with include the electromagnetic field, whose fluctuations give rise to photons. Just a few years ago, a particle dubbed the God Particle was found in the Large Hadron Collider, and along with it comes another quantum field. The Higgs field gives rise to the Higgs boson, which is a particle that many scientists believe is involved in giving mass to some of the fundamental particles of the standard model. So we know that quantum fields play an important role in our world today, but how could they help solve the asymmetry problem between matter and antimatter? What next? In the very early superheated universe, everything was contained in an area much smaller than it is now, and because of that, these quantum fields may have behaved differently than they do today. 
Remember that the universe was expanding extremely rapidly in the time right after the Big Bang. But for it to expand evenly, uniformity needed to be held throughout space. This means that any asymmetry between matter and antimatter could have caused an uneven expansion, leading to a lumpy universe far earlier than astronomers have theorized. But we know that there was more matter than antimatter, because we are here right now. So there must have been something that helped the universe keep its uniformity. This theory puts forward the idea that in the very early universe, quantum fields interacted with each other in such a way that some of these very weird objects known as cue balls were created and may have allowed the universe to become what it is today. How can cue balls solve the matter versus antimatter problem? When quantum fields interacted in this special way during the early universe, they began to produce more matter than antimatter. And in order to hold the uniformity of the universe, the quantum fields created lumps within them to contain the excess. These lumps, or cue balls, can each contain matter and antimatter and may also have their own asymmetry between the amounts of each they contain. So, during the early universe, when uniformity was essential to an even expansion, cue balls were able to hold on to the excess matter until the universe was able to contain itself. As the universe expanded, the cue balls stayed around, stuck in the quantum fields, until they inevitably ruptured, pouring their contents back into the universe. When these cue balls popped, they would end up releasing more matter, filling the universe with new particles and giving the matter the final edge over antimatter in the universe. But even though the cue balls popped and released their contents a long time ago, they may have left behind signs of their existence that will help strengthen this theory. If astronomers can find them, how can we find them? When cue balls pop, the models show that they will create powerful sound waves that are as long as strong gravitational waves that ripple through the fabric of space. Luckily for scientists, there have been a number of labs built in the past few decades specifically designed to pick up gravitational waves just like these coming from deep in the cosmos. If scientists can pick up some of these gravitational waves, they may be able to confirm that cue balls exist and that they could have played a role in matter overtaking antimatter in the early universe. Are there other theories to solve this problem? Neither the current standard model of particle physics nor Albert Einstein's theories of relativity offer any answer or explanation for why the universe was created like this. Could it just be random happenstance that matter triumphed over antimatter and led to our universe existing as we see it today? Many scientists are not satisfied with that answer and continue to look for a reason behind this seemingly fundamental asymmetry of the universe. But new theories are not always easy to come by. Cue balls have given some scientists hope that the reason why this essential feature of our universe is the way it is, will finally be discovered. But there is still a lot of work that needs to be done to strengthen the theories, and until evidence is found of their existence, cue balls will continue to remain a possible answer to one of the universe's most fundamental questions. Do you think cue balls played a role in creating this essential asymmetry? Or is there another theory that strikes you more? Thanks for watching. See you next time on matter.